Well, hello there. I'm Sandy Allnock. Long live snail mail. I am going to be doing some distress ink watercolor today. Today I'm introducing Concord in Ninth and Evelyn T because I wanted to use both of their stamp sets on my card. I've got all these great mailboxes and I wanted to make it interactive and make the mailbox open. I want to add a post to it and then add flowers down beneath it. And that's where Evelyn T is going to come in because I'm going to add those to make a garden where the mailbox is going to be sitting. And I'm going to be using some techniques you've seen with other stamp lines here on my channel. So I will get to that as we go. And I'm putting some ink onto the, the background stamp. So there's two pieces of this mailbox and you can treat them in different ways, but I'm treating that one as the, the inside of the mailbox. And then I'm gonna stamp on a different piece to create the door that opens. There's gonna be a little snail inside, cute little guy. And I'm stamping the other portions of it separately, the flag and the base of it, to create the, the kind of pole that this is sitting on. I'm using these little lines. I'm not sure what the little lines are for, but I masked, I masked off one side of it, the right-hand side, and then lined the left side of those stripes on the left side of where the pole would be. And I'm using Distress Inks, so I can just add water to it, and it's going to soften the ink. Now, Distress Ink is not watercolor, just so you know that. So I'm not going to get the same kinds of textures and things that I'm going to get if I use regular watercolor, and I'm not going to get the same movement that I get with regular watercolor. And there's a whole lot of different reasons why you might want to use one or the other. And for this, I just thought it would be fun to try it and play around with these colors and see what I could create out of using just distress inks instead of watercolors. You could also just use your watercolor or your, your distress inks to stamp with and use watercolor to do the painting portion. But this technique, you may have seen me do quite a bit with the uh, Art Impressions stamps, because Art Impressions does a lot with, they have little flowers and things, and you stamp them with water-based inks and water-based markers, and then you can turn them into watercolor in this same kind of a way. So I'm going to get the inside of this mailbox all painted up, and I'm doing that by just using the Distress ink on a quote-unquote palette. I'm just putting some onto the block. You can put it onto anything plasticky that you want so that you have a puddle of ink that you can pick up with your brush. And I'm going to add some flowers here and I masked off the post by just using a little sticky note. Nothing fancy at all. And then I'll add some flowers. Now with this technique that I've shown in, if you're interested in more of this, go look for my Art Impressions watercolor playlist because I do this a ton in those. These are just larger flowers. Art Impressions has little tiny ones, so these are big ones, but they, the principle is very much the same. If you like that kind of a technique, then you're just gonna apply it in a sort of bigger way here on a card like this. And you can just paint in the little flowers and put water just in the blossoms, or you can just take your brush and really make big swooshy moves and create more of fuzzy flowers in the distance. So you get some depth in your flower arrangement here underneath of your mailbox by putting down the first layer and letting it be soft and washy and then stamp over top of it. And if you stamp over top while it's wet, you'll end up with softer edges. And here I'm painting over top of it with more distress ink while it's wet and I'm getting really soft edges on these flowers. As the paper dries, I can get harder edges and sharper lines. So it really depends on what kind of line you're looking for at what point. And I love mixing all of it, mixing all the different types of techniques together when making a little garden like this. Because if you look at a garden, not every flower is going to be in focus to your eye. You're going to be looking at the ones that are most likely right in front, and those are going to have the sharpest edges. The ones in the distance, in the background, if you think about your, your phone, if you have an iPhone, there's a portrait mode, and the portrait mode fuzzes out everything in the distance. And that's basically what this is doing. 
So I'm stamping while this area is still wet and I get really soft stamp lines. And as it starts to dry, watch how some portions of it are going to have harder edges and the ink is going to get darker. To stamp around that post, I can again use a sticky note, just put it right there along the edge so that I can create a dark edge with some of these really detailed little flowers that stops right at the edge of the post and it starts to make it look like those are behind the post. You can make some flowers then cascade in front of it. There's innumerable ways you can do this. I'm keeping all my flowers kind of in the lower right hand section of the card just to not make it such a cacophony. I tried this one earlier, I was practicing with it and I just had too many flowers. I needed some white space for the eye to rest. So when I finally started doing this one, I made sure I left that upper left section and the top kind of really just light and bright and put more of the rich color down here at the bottom. And you can see I've got darker colors. So these are starting to pull forward and the colors that I had painted earlier that were really soft recede to the background. And you can end up building up a beautiful garden this way. And I decided I wanted a little bit of that reddish color and not a ton of it because I was trying to keep most of my colors that I pulled out in that really soft, cool blues, cool purples, cool greens kind of a look with just that little pop of something hot right in the middle of it to pull attention to the flag and then to the little, little guy inside the mailbox. So now I've got a scrap and I am stamping what I see as the front of the mailbox and I put a couple different colors on it. You can just tap on different colors onto the stamp and when you start watercoloring then you end up with a little bit of both colors in there. It'll make it look like it's a little rustier, a little older. And again, you can paint around all those little letters so that the letters remain white and then use some some more ink on your quote unquote palette on your block to start painting in more colors so you can have something a little bit richer. You can decide how much you want intensity or do you want to leave it just sort of a grayish type of a box. Now, I'm going to be making this mailbox look like it opens. So I'm going to be trimming it out. So I realized I didn't have to stay in the lines. I could have just slopped it around and that sort of thing. So I'm going to just do a real quick trim around it. It's a really easy shape to do some hand trimming with my little detail scissors. Love these little guys. And then I could just put some adhesive on the bottom. I'm using just some, some be creative tape. I did do a little extra painting on the inside that did not get captured there on the inside of the, uh, the mailbox because I wanted a more intense blue. So now we've got that ready to roll and I'm going to um, add this on now. I, I put it onto the card base, adding my sentiment to it, but I decided to do two colors. So I have one stamping that I did with the lighter color and then added a little extra ink to stamp the snail mail and having the misty in there really helped to line that up. So now I've got my little card that opens up and the snail says hello inside. Very sweet little type of interactive card with just one little bit of motion. All the supplies are listed in the doobly doo down below. If you liked this video, click the like button, hop over to the blog if you want to pin something, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.